Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Sunday Adelaja from Kiev, Ukraine. Um, I'm a friend to Dr. Miles Moreau, a covenant brother. And uh, I did a video just recently uh, uh, answering some of the questions that people have been uh, asking. And, you know, I even read an article where someone was saying, well, it is Pastor Dr. God had allowed Dr. Miles to die and to, uh, for his team also to die with him so young because that is what pa Pastor, uh, Pastor Miles had proclaimed, that he had always proclaimed in his teachings that uh, it is not how long you live, but how much impact you left. But, and, uh, and uh, you know, and that, that is what he has professed and that's what he got. You know, so this has the words of cynics and I don't want to have any dealings with cynics. And as his covenant brother though, I think it's my responsibility to also give answer to sincere believers who are actually, you know, asking these same questions. But they are not asking questions to query or to you know, accuse or to uh, set, you know, start a controversy, but they are sincere believers who just want to know because everybody wants to, of course, everybody wants wishes. Everybody wished, wishes to have uh, Dr. Miles Moreau uh, here for as long as possible. And it was such a blessing to all of us. But still, I think the question is coming more from the fact that we as Christians, we think there is a promise that says God will satisfy us with long life. With long life. With long life will I satisfy you. And but the, the people think this is not long enough. And even if you think that uh, 60 years is long enough, what will you say about the youth pastor who was just 33 or so, 34 or so? What will you say about the pilot who was 34? What will you say about the, the lady, the wife, the youth pastor, the lady pastor, the, youth, the wife of the youth pastor who was also 34? What will you say about the young boy who was just five years old? And what will you say about the pregnant baby, I mean, the pregnancy that was inside the youth pastor's wife? What, what is it? There's just a lot of confusion and people need answers. Okay, I've addressed the fact that, that you know, why should we die tragically? And why should God allow tragic death? That is in my first address and trying to answer these difficult questions about the demise or the method of death of a people we really love and, and respect so much. And because I'm a covenant brother, the terms and conditions of covenant demand that a covenant brother will step out. Just like I spoke in, about the attitude of Dr. Miles Moreau to me when I needed help, when I was in a desperate situation with my, you know, chicken pass. And he stepped in as a covenant brother and he mentioned it to me at that time that that is what covenant brothers do. We are brothers keepers. We are not brothers accusers. We are brothers keepers. And so at yeah, this time when my brother and my friend is not here to speak for himself. Here I am, standing tall to say, I stand to try to give at least some explanation, as, as I understand, to, you know, relieve some people that are grieving and that are in confusion and that are feeling so sad and thinking maybe something had been wrong with the teachings or the doctrines and with some of those things. Well, so that Satan does, we don't give Satan a place Somebody needs to address these things. So that's why I'm coming out to say, well, the way I will address the tragic death and the loss of life of all these people that we all love, they have their relatives, and I was so encouraged to listen. You know, if you go to the, a website and to the YouTube, you will see news reports about the families of the, of the people who died, especially the youth pastor, uh, they their, their, their family members, the pilot family members, and all of them are deep Christians and genuine Christians, and they don't blame God. They don't have any regrets. They are happy that their loved ones died serving God and doing what they love to do. And, it, you know, they are people of understanding, and that is a compliment to the fact that Dr. Miles has actually done a great job by training his people to, to and preparing them for whatever comes their way. And that, that is a compliment, really. But the, the, what, what are the explanations that I want to add to that? What are my explanations to the fact that 
those lives should be cut short. My first explanation is, you know what? I want to die young. I think dying young is a dream. It's a dream come true, can die young. And I still want to support the idea that Pastor Dr. Miles Monroe, you know, propagated and preached when he was here, that it's not how long you live, but how much contribution you make. I want to make as much possible contribution as possible, but if I die young, I'm going to be happy. You remember what Paul said? He said, I'm dreaming. I'm eager to go and be with the Lord. And that was his heart desire. He was desirous to die young, if necessary, but just for him to get out of this world. This world is not our home, my friend. We want to get out of here as much as possible. And we want to go and be with the Lord. And if we are going to be here, it will only be for one reason, just to please the Lord that sent us here in the first place. But if the Lord that sends us here decides that our time is over, even if we are just one day old, we're not going to query him. We're not going to question him. We're just going to agree with him and say, your will be done. You gave and you collected back Blessed be the name of the Lord. And, uh, and, you know, we should know that there is nothing to hold on to in this world. The only reason why we're here is to do good, to do his will. And if he says, you've done enough, even by living just a few years, so be it. He knows better. He sent me here anyway. He knows how long he sent me here for. I'm not deciding how long he sends me. He's going to send, I'm supposed to stay here for. He decides, he decided that before I even appeared here. I shouldn't query him or his choices. That's one thing, the, the first thing I want to say about it. The second thing I want to say about dying early is that, you know what? For, let's start with Dr. Miles and uh, Dr. Ruth. Dying early for them, I think it's a dream. I think it's, is the best thing that could happen to anybody, especially of that caliber. Because when you die young, this is talking historically now. Historically, dying young uh, you, is, is an advantage in the sense that you are dying at your, at your, at your best. You are dying at your apex, when you are, you are di dying at your prime. And dying at your prime means people historically, down the years, will remember you at your prime. And that's why, Jesus, you know, Jesus died at his prime. Jesus didn't live on to be 80 years old or 70 years old, and we didn't think that was something unfair. God decides, and we're happy. And the fact that Jesus died young leaves a picture in the mind of people for generations to come. And the same for Dr. Miles. We didn't get to see him tired. We didn't get, get to see him were worn out. We didn't get to see him, you know, unable to walk and, you know, you know uh, crawling. We didn't get to see him on the, the sick bed for so long. We didn't get to see him losing his message or losing his edge. You know, we, he left at this point, the best time when he was at the cutting edge. When, so what, re, what remains in the memory of everybody becomes that edge, the edge, uh, the, the cutting edge he was in when he left. What, what remains in the mind of everybody is Dr. Miles Monroe at his prime. So you will never see his weakness. You see him in his strength. So that's why the movie stars that really become, you know, historic figures are people who die young. If you look at the king of uh, rock and roll, <laughs> you know, I'm sorry to use that here, I'm not going to mention any name. Because he died so young, he become an icon, become an icon, iconic figure. Or, you know, if, historically, if you look at Shea, the revolutionary from, uh, from Cuba, from Bolivia or Cuba, 
you know, uh, he's, uh, who died in Bolivia from, from Argentina or is it Cuba. So that, he, he died young. Because of that, he became, a, he became an iconic figure. People who die in their prime, because they, they seem to get more authority. They, they have more cloud. Why? Because, you know, I'm just talking about it from the psychological aspect of it and the historical aspect of it. Because uh, people want to identify themselves with something strong, like Jesus died young. Paul, John the Baptist died young. He also died a tragic death. But you want to identify yourself with something young, agile, active, strong, handsome, beautiful, and, you know, something attractive. And in contrast to that, I would like to, I will not mention some names, but, you know, I know so many men of God who were so good at their prime, who were so famous and effective at their prime. But as soon as they are ages, I mean, they, began to, they began to get older, they began to win in ages, they began to fade off. And they're still alive today, but it's like, I'm sorry to say, some of them have outlived their relevance. And you don't hear about them. And, you know, not to mention any name, but if for the past three, four, five years, I know men of God that were more famous than Pastor Miles Monroe at the time. Who were more, who Miles Monroe will even call his teachers and, you know, fathers in the Lord. But because they lived for so long, people got used to them so much that when they left the world, their fame was not as worthwhile. And the, the acclaim and the news and the, the encourage, you know, the, or the, the cloud about their death and the, the covering and the, 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 the positive that was coming out of it was not as much. Nobody, some of the, some of them, very little, you know, people covered it. Like, for example, Mike Monroe's death was covered by CNN, CBN, you know, any, you know, Fox, anyone that could, any, you know, any major media in the world covered it. Also, partly because it was a tragic, a tragic, tragic death, because it was a tragic death. And because it was uh, a life that was cut short. So there are advantages in everything. A member of my church just called me the other day and said, Wow, if such a man could die so young, oh, I want to get all his tapes. I want to get all his messages. I, I'm, I, I want to review my life. I want to begin se to become serious with God because now I know Christians could die young, so I could die young too. So a lot of people have been encouraged because of this death. So we don't know how God could turn negative things to positive, but God can do it. I know that so many people who even never heard Dr. Miles are hearing about his death, what all everybody is saying about him, and everybody gets to say, hey, look, go look into the messages, go look, in, go to the YouTube, you will see people watching the messages and tributes and, you know, going back to old messages of my model, like when they didn't even do when he was alive. So I told this my member and many other people like that from all over, I said, oh, you heard of Dr. Miles, you, he was in our church, you didn't even come to the meeting. Now, when he died, you are going to buy all his books. <laughs> you see, we don't know how God could use anything for his glory. Now, let's now come to uh, the other people that died in that tragic accident. Same thing. I don't know if you've heard of, you know, maybe you've heard of the, the, the assistant pastor, the, the residence pastor, or maybe you've never heard about him. Maybe you've heard about... The, I don't know how many of you have heard about the youth pastor, the, the husband and the wife, or the little... We, no, we've not heard about them before. Most of us have, no, have never heard about them before these tragic incidents. Or the pilots, most of them have, us, us have never heard about them. But after, because of the tragedy that happened by, by them dying young, I think they have made more impact than six billion, maybe, maybe seven billion people living in our world today, not dying, alive, but nobody has ever heard of their names. What is the, you know, tell me what, which is better? You know, they've made more positive impact for the kingdom of God in their death than when they were alive. They've made more positive impact and contribution to the kingdom of God. They've made more news in their death than Maybe 
99% of the people alive today. How many people in our world today have had more news covering than all these people who died tragically? You know how many people are getting their lives dedicated back to the Lord? Getting to know God just because of the tragedy? You know how much people are hearing the names of all these people, these families? They have left a legacy and a big footprint. And I'm proud of what God is doing after their death to our world, to our continent. And it's shaking our mindset, even shaking out of, out of our comfort zone, shaking out of our religious beliefs, out of our religious cliches and out of our dogmas. And I think that, you know, we don't question God. We don't query God. Even the, uh, uh, the hair of our head is not, doesn't fall to the ground without the permission of God. So if that happened, I know and I think God knows about it. And if he allowed it to happen, he knows, he knows better. And I see a lot of positive coming out of this. And um, I know some of the things I'm saying are quite controversial, but you know what? Let's look for the good in this tragedy rather than just focus on some rhetoric questions that you will never be satisfied with any answers anybody could give to you. But Dr. Miles, you've done, you've done a great job. You've left a great legacy. All the guys that lost their, all the people that lost their life in that tragedy, in that plane crash, you know, I'm sure everyone is proud of you. I'm sure you are among the saints and the heroes of everyone right now. And um, we are just got, glad that in your death, we got to know you all. And in your death, you are gain, gaining, get, having more impact and more contribution than we've, we've had you or uh, we, 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 we know you, that you must have done when you are alive. And uh, rest in peace, everybody. And uh, we'll meet you very soon up there. God bless everybody. <laughs>